The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 29th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a mixed market. The mix goes like this. The Dow's up 175 points, half a percent, two-tenths for the S&P, or nine points. The Nasdaq's off two-tenths, 26 points. This, the Russell's up over 1%. That's a 20-point move out there. Always good for bull markets when the Russell's leading the charge. The semis are down one-tenth percent. That's four points. Tranny's up four-tenths percent, 64 points. So we got a mixed bag. Gold's back three bucks with silver down 21 cents. Lights recruit up 45 pennies. Natural gas up four cents. 30 of treasury printed out one. 2614. That's off nearly two full points. Leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you got Goldman Sachs up $10, 3%. Broadcom, $9, up 1%. Frankly, Covey, Franklin Covey up uh, $9, 24%. Green Buyer Companies up 23%, $750. Restoration Hardware has got a move of about 2.5%, $750 there. To the downside, it's Bioxyl Therapeutics off 62%. That's an $11 move. Baidu down 5%, $7.40. Disc Medicine off 11% or $560. Snowflake down $450 or 2.5%. Uh, Atlassian. Corporation down about two and three tenths percent. That's about a four dollar move. So we got plenty of movers and shakers. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin by looking at our market breadth out there. If we take a look at the 30 minute time frame, yeah, let's look at the 30 minute first shortest time frame that we have and only for two instruments. That would be the ES mini or the SP 500. That's what's up on our screen right now. We're in bullish crossover mode, meaning more meaning that mode, meaning that more instruments are trading above the top of profile or above resistance versus those trading below support or the bottom of the profile. 197 above, 98 below. Those are good market conditions for the 30 minute time frame. With regard to the NASDAQ 100, let's see what its numbers are. As of 11.10 in the morning, it's also bullish. 35 above, 19 below. Let's look at the other four time frames, which I believe inside the S&P is going to be bullish for those. So the S&P bullish for each of its time frames out here. Uh, that's not the grid we were looking for, but this is. Here is the S&P, 62.40 daily, weekly. We are bullish for each of those. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ 100 is still bearish for its 60-minute time frame. 23 above, 35 below. So that's the only time frame that's really an issue with regard to market breadth out there. Let's go take a look at those charts and see if we can figure out, make hay as to what the markets are doing. So we'll take a look at our multi-panel set of charts out here. We'll change screens. We'll get over to the white background screens. And what we've got up on our screen right now is the ES Mini. The ES Mini, where it's really struggling, 
is finding resistance, is up at that daily oscillator and change line. And that's up at the 44.38 level. When we look at a five-hour time frame chart, there's nothing here to suggest to you or I that price should not continue to move higher. Why is that, Steve-O? Well, you had a nice TD9 count bottom. You now have an A to B equals C D to the upside that is forming. Price has pulled back several times to test support, support being the top of the profile, so old resistance has become support, as well as its oscillator and change line, currently in the 44.13 level. We've got really a similar setup inside of the 240-minute chart. No topping pattern on the two-hour chart. The 60-minute, the 30-minute, the 15, and the 10, each of those have roads meant to indicator top. So the cool thing for you, the cool thing for me, the cool thing for us is that if we see a close above the intraday high, that being at 44.36.75, that's going to then suggest to you and I that the market should continue to rally into the end of the trading session, I would say, into tomorrow as well out there as we enter the July 4th holiday weekend. Is there anything else out here for me to report to you? I wish there was. I don't see it. So let's move on and go take a look at the NQ. Let's see what the charts for the NQ tell us. Let's get to the uh, September contract. This will take just a moment to populate. Remember, in the NQ was a 60-minute time frame that had that uh, bearish crossover. I believe it was 35 below, 23 above, something along those lines. So we'll definitely look at the 60-minute time frame chart. Just understand where support or resistance is when we take a look at the NQ. And here on the upper left-hand corner, or lower left-hand corner, I should say, should, should we, we can, as we look at the 60-minute time frame, don't worry, I'll get those words out of my mouth. They, you might just have to put them in a different order, but, uh, but I'll get them out. What we can see here on the 60-minute time frame is the pullback this morning was nothing more than a test of support. That was its bullish structured profile, which is between the range of 15.041 to 15.060. So that level held, you can't bust them down. What should price do? It should try to bust them to the upside. The first level of resistance and that 60 minute time frame is going to be about 15.151. That's the current oscillator and change line. A close above that, now that number is going to be higher if the market rallies. So let's just call it 15.155. If you see a close above 15.155, odds favor we make our way to 15. 199. Now that could be set up the consolidation for the day. I don't know, uh, but that's between 15.041 and 15.199. The NQ is really what we should be watching. The 15-minute time frame formed a TD9 count bottom pattern, and right now we've got price trading above its profile level. So 15.134 is the next stop, or should be the next stop for the NQ for its 15-minute time frame. You've got a bullish. Uh, Roads meant to indicator signal on the 10 minute time frame chart out here. So, where's the real key levels of resistance? I, I don't think it's much more difficult than saying the high of the day, just like we just we had a nice TD9 count top that formed for each of the equity future contracts. So, that formed this morning. The high out there to watch is 15,202. Subscribers and I knew that the markets were rallying into the nine o'clock time frame and that they were going to go ahead and pull back or likely pull back into the cash market open. That's exactly what took place out there. The reason we knew that, and I'll just uh, get over and we'll just take a look at those charts, was because we had a unanimous vote on the 30 minute time frame charts. Each of them formed TD nine count tops today that completed at nine o'clock. That was a pretty good indication for us that price was gonna pull back. In the case of the ES mini, pull back tested, got a little bit below its breakout level at 44.16. The Dow doing the same thing at 34.100. The Russell never even got back to its breakout level at 1871.80. That is a strong dog as we speak right now. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. 
Teddy Kegstaff breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. It's only the NASDAQ 100 right now that's trading the downside off 12 points and a little less than one-tenth percent. Let's go out to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and speak with Keith. Keith, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm good, Steve. You? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for asking. Uh, got anything planned for the 4th of July? Just a lot of honeydews right now. I hear you. I hear you there. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try to get an early start on mine just to free up a little bit of time. I know you want to take a look at the industrial sector. That's the XLI. Uh, what are you doing? How can I best help you? Well, I wanted to ask you, Steve, I've um, what what I did, what, if you notice, I'm, I'm kind of a Gartley butterfly guy. So okay. if, if, if you notice there on the, um, I think it was the 13th or 14th of June, uh, price hit the 1.72, pardon, pardon me, the 1.27 coming off of uh, uh, mid or mid to early March. Sure, I've got that. And too. okay, and so I uh, I bought a few puts uh, at that point and uh, closed them out close to the 382 okay. coming down. Okay. Now, now um, with those, you know, with the 26th and 27th with those two strong bars there coming up off the 3A2. Yeah. Um, I was looking, I was kind of looking for a place to short or buy puts again, but I'm concerned about those bars, how strong they are. Got it. And I was curious with your work, what, what do you think? Uh, sure. Is that, is, is, you know. 
No, good, 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 good question. So, so we've drawn in the A to B equals CD pattern that Keith was talking about. We can see how price got up to the 1.272 area, and and that's where he went ahead and shorted it. He talked about uh, if we just take a look at that C to D leg, and we put our Fibonacci retracement tool, we'll see that the one, the 0 0.382 retracement got us down to 102.75. The actual low that came in was back on the trade day of June 23rd, and that was at 102.91. So right now, the information that we have available to us is that the daily time frame for the industrial sector was trading with inside a slightly bearish structure daily profile. What I mean by that, the top of the profile is where sellers are at, the bottom is where buyers are at. The center is where buyers and sellers both believe there's fair value with inside that range. Since that center was closer to the top and there's both buyers and sellers there, that's why I refer to it as a bearish structured profile because we had sellers in that range of 104.16 to 103.15. And two days ago, price closed above that level. Yesterday, tested and rejected the top of that um, profile level. So now what we can say is that old resistance has become support. So 105.14 would be a real key level for you to watch and observe, Keith. If price got back below that, that might be signaling that it would be time to short. Um, if, you do, if you're trying to find some type of pattern right now to short while price is above profile, the only thing that we have is price moving into a swing point, the swing point from June 16th, and there were 14 million shares that were done on that day. So far today, you've done 3.5 million shares. That says that if this volume pace were to keep up, we'd be at about 10 million shares by day's end, and that's going against uh, 14 million. So you're moving up into that with lighter volume, but you're up above daily resistance, you're up above weekly resistance, that being its profile level. And right now, price is taking on the monthly profile, which is trading above, and the monthly profile is 105.52, we're trading at 105.89. So that's what the charts are telling us, that we are above resistance out here. Now, when you went short, I'm going to switch over to my other systems. When you went short, mm -hmm. um, my system would not have told you to do that. So let's discount maybe the system a little bit. What I mean by that is that on the trading day of June 14th, um, as this was approaching the uh, 1.272 area, in fact, it kind of hit it right to the T, nearly the high of that day, that was a TD9 count top. Now, that was a signal to go short. If you had gone short that day, I would have said, yeah, that's what I, I get that signal too. But what happened on the very next session is price took that level out. When you negate a TD9 count top on a, a immediately, which is what this did, that typically says to us that we have a strong momentum move to the upside. So that's its message, Keith. Is that uh, anything so far yeah. that I've shared with you that yeah. uh, that doesn't yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, perfect. Makes sense, so, Steve. Yeah. yeah. So we're above that. We're above profile levels. Again, daily, weekly, monthly. I don't have a topping pattern on the daily, weekly, or the monthly. What we do have is price moving into prior swing point highs, all-time highs, as a matter of fact. Uh, if we take a look at the monthly, that would be June of 2022. That confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. That tells us, Keith, that the resistance level, the key resistance, is really up at 107.88. So since, you're, you know, since you've got a, a hankering to go short, I'd wait for price, see if we can get a test of that 107.88. And if you can get a test and rejection out there of that swing point, you know, maybe it pulls back to whether it's the top of the profile, 105.14, or wherever the oscillator and change line would be printing at that time. Uh, but I would wait for for that. And, and another reason to consider waiting for that, Keith, is um, if we take a look at the seasonal pattern here. Now, this is a seasonal pattern over the last 24 years for the industrial sector. The red vertical line is where we're at today. And the industrial sector, much like the S&P 500, typically bottoms around June 24th, 25th, 26th. Well, we've kind of got that. And then it moves higher into, this is the seasonal pattern, into the uh, late part of July, really right around July 30th out there. So we've got a lot of reasons to say, okay, if you want to short it, at least wait for a test of that swing point high, maybe get a rejection. I'd love to see some type of topping signal that takes place at that point in time. But that's really what all the tools that I have are communicating to us. Any questions from that information or maybe additional assistance that I can provide? No, that, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, okay. I kind of yeah. had a hunch that uh, maybe I was uh, – trying to sell into too much strength as well but um we'll it's a see tough, what that looks like when it gets up there yeah it's kind of uh, tough this time of year keith it's it, it, the difficulty with this time of year is that hey we know that people are on vacation 
you know, so volume level sometimes get, you know, even though I said, hey, we're moving into those swing points with light volume. We are, but we do have to take into consideration most people are vacationing, you know, right around now. Right. So, right. Uh, but, right. but yeah, I would at least, what I would do is at least wait until Wednesday, right? You've got uh, trading until one o'clock, I believe, on Monday. We're closed on Tuesday. The market is that is. And if you get changes in trend, if there's one thing that David White taught us, it's that typically you get a change in trend after a weekend out there. So, you know, I'd wait at least until Monday at one o'clock. Um, and at Monday at one o'clock, you need to see some type of failure at that swing point high. Uh, so, so I'm not saying don't do it because you're approaching resistance, but um, but I, I wouldn't go short here right now. Got it, got it. Hey, Steve, I love the show. Well, thanks. thanks I love that much. you're listening. And uh, have yep. a happy 4th of July. Be safe out there. Enjoy all those honeydews. <laughs> uh, I'll be thinking about you as I'm doing mine. And uh, right. uh, have a terrific 4th. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Now we got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside. I expect these gains will hold. I expect that we will continue to move higher tomorrow, likely on Monday as well. Although Monday, we'll just say, is a little bit more questionable about that. But we should rally uh, today and uh, tomorrow out there. We are in the favorable, just like uh, just like we took a look at with Keith, the XLI, the industrial sector. Um, and uh, that's in, uh, you know, that's in a favorable seasonal cycle. Another reason to not go short there. The market itself is in a favorable seasonal cycle that lasts, at least the S&P lasts through the mid part of uh, July out there. Let's take a look at a couple of requests that have come in. Would love more. So uh, give us a call at 877-927-6648 or send me an email. Send that to Steve at TFNN.com. Dan inside the Tigers. Dan, I want to take a look at ticker symbol FCEL. That is fuel cell technologies out here. So FCEL. <laughs> CEL is printing right now at about $2.20. And Dan, that is right at or just below the bottom of its daily profile. So actually, it's trading about two fifteen right now. Looks like we've got a little bit of a delay on my uh, data feed here on the white background charts. So the bottom of that profile level to watch is 221. Now, ideally, what you'd like to see is you would like to see a swell. Today's going to be bar number nine. So today's close must be below 218. We're at 215 right now. If you get a close below 218, and Scott means 217 or below, then you'll get bar number eight of a TD9 count. But what you will then also need is a spike below bar number seven. That we mean a spike below 209, and that would need to take place today or tomorrow to generate a TD9 count bottom. If we don't get that, then odds favor we head lower. Now, head lower to where? Well, the first target that I would have on the head lower is about 205. That is the oscillator and change line on the weekly time frame. If I take a look at a swing point out here, Dan, I'll pull the chart back a little bit further to make sure I'm not missing anything. But I see a swing point low from May 26. The volume there was 8.8 .8 million shares. As price got down and was trying to test that, it didn't get down there back on that bar seven. That was 10.5 million going into 8.8. .8. Yesterday, the volume on this was 16, whoa, 16 million. Dan, this says to me that what fuel cell wants to do is at least get down and test that swing point. Let me pull this back further. Well, there's there's even deeper swing points out here. So what it could be gunning for is that swing point all the way back from April the 26th out there. So look, you're below on the daily base, you're below profile, you're below red oscillator and change line. We don't have any kind of a bottoming pattern out here. And as long as price remains below that uh, support level, that profile level, that really opens up the door for move back to those uh, lows from back in April of 2023. Now you have a beautiful TD9 count bottom on the weekly time frame out here, but that's just slippily led to a consolidation, if you will, with inside its weekly profile. And that range out here, Dan, is between a buck 93 and 307, support and resistance. I don't have anything for you on the monthly time frame chart. So I think you've got to watch to see how today plays out. Really, you don't have to do anything. You really would need to close above 226 or that red oscillator and change line in order to suggest that that's saying uh, that maybe the work to the downside is, is done with. You'd like to get that signal because then you could say, okay, you've got three, then uh, a higher or at least two higher lows out there and two higher highs, you know, the, which would be an uptrend. But we don't have that daily signal right now. So that's uh, my view with regard to uh, fuel cell technology. FCEL is the uh, ticker symbol. Dan also wanted to take a look at BL, BLNK, Blink out here. Uh, if that's it, blink charging. So let's get over and take a look at its screen. Pretty right now at about 576. Oh, we didn't get to that screen. Why didn't we get to that screen? Hmm. Let's try that one more time. Change win. Oh, I know why. Sorry, sorry. That was Stevie's fault. It usually is. So now we take a look at uh, blink. Now, in oh, so, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. what do you have here? So what we've got is this will not form a uh, TD9 count bottom, even though one is present. In order to do that, Dan, well, I can't say it can't. In order to do that, you would need to see a close below 566 today. If you get that, you've got a TD9 count bottom. Now, even though this, this, even though this doesn't show up as a bullish reversal candle, uh, we're going we're gonna to give it that status. And price is trading above that red oscillator and change line. Blink should, at a minimum, Dan, get up to 603. That's if it closes above 573 today. And 603 is the top of that uh, daily profile. Now, what we haven't seen in Blink, I don't think, for quite some time. Let me let's let's make sure of that. Is a close above the top of a profile on a daily basis. 
So the last time that that unfolded was back on uh, February of this year. So I would say, Dan, if you can close above, if Blink can close above uh, 603, odds favor that you would have a change in trend signal. That's a daily time frame chart. Let's look at the weekly chart, weekly and monthly, see if there's any signals. On a weekly time frame, you have a TD9 count bottom that formed last week. And that says as long as price does not close below 555, 555, you've got a nice confirmed bottom. And on a monthly chart, Blink is in bar number nine this month. As long as it closes below uh, 905 and you're at 578, so odds favor that, you'd have a TD9 count bottom on the monthly. Now, it can go on to form that low on the following month, right? But you would have a uh, TD9 count bottom on the monthly, assuming that the weekly holds, that's good. And a daily time frame would say, if you get that close above 603, Blink is on a buy. So that's what I see when I take a look at Blink. I hope that helps you out. And to round this thing out, Dan wanted to take a look at BBAI. So let's get those charts up on our screen right now. That is uh, Big Bear AI Holdings out here. So we take a look at Big Bear. Right now, trading out at uh, $2.52. It's trading with inside or consolidating with inside its profile. Now, this formed an A to B equals CD to the upside and formed an A to B equals CD to the downside. In essence, that was confirmed or completed with that bullish engulfing candle back on June the 6th. And what that has led to now, Dan, is just a consolidation with inside your profile. So the areas to watch to the downside for support are going to be 206 and to the upside is going to be 270. Now, price should really get to 270. It's a slightly bullish structured profile. You're above the center of that box. You're above the uh, weekly oscillator and change line. So conditions here are ripe for price to make that move for at least another 18 pennies and get up towards that 270 level. The monthly chart, not enough data to really assist us with anything out here. A quick peek at the 30 minute time frame chart tells us what? Tells us that we do not have a top, at least not just yet. Although there is an A to B equals CD pattern. And if we did get a bearish reversal candle, then the 30 minute time frame chart would be preparing us for a intraday pullback. And where would that intraday pullback take us to? I would say right around 239 to 234 would be the number. But we don't have that signal just yet. We've got another nearly 23 minutes left in this candle session. So too early to make any kind of call on that 30 minute time frame chart. But other than a bearish reversal candle forming, that suggests moving further to the upside. So that's what I see when I take a look at those three instruments. I hope that that helped you out, and I really do appreciate the request. In Denners, if you're listening in, whether you're inside the den or not, I would love requests. It just makes the show go smoother. Plus, I'm providing you with the information that you're looking for versus me providing you with the information, well, that who knows I randomly might have run across. Greg wants to look at ticker symbol. Uh, the, he wants to take a look at the U.S. dollar index out there. So to do that, Stevie's got to close a bunch of charts, change the uh, data feed, and we're at a break. So now is the time to do that. We get back to this break. We'll take a look at the U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar index, and uh, anything else that you'd like to as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, sorry, I'm just kind of in the middle of uh, something here. And, uh, okay, I think I've got that set. So I'm just trying to get prepared for the question. So we're first taking a look at the U.S. dollar index. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change panes here. Let's go to the black background screen just for a moment. And here I've got my um, synthetic instrument for the U.S. dollar. So it's going to give us profile information for multiple time frames. So upper left is the daily time frame. And the question was basically, uh, could you do your magic on the dollar? I'm watching the gold contract. It looks like a potential reversal candle. You've held off on buying because of the A to B equals CD down. Is it time to uh, nibble? Okay, so we'll try to answer all of those questions. Because um, you threw a couple of things out here. First, with regard to the U.S. dollar index, you can see prices trading above the top of its daily profile. What that does, that sets up a small A to B equals C D to the upside. So we put that in here. The A point is going to be the low from June 1st. The high is going to be the high from, I'm sorry, the low was the low from June 22nd. The high was the high from uh, June 23rd. And then the uh, C point, I should say, is uh, June 27th. So the 1 to 1 gets us 103.26, 101.272, 103.61. So likely the U.S. dollar is headed towards that area. Now, what could get in the way? What could get in the way of the U.S. dollar index moving higher is this long descending trend line. This descending trend line began in September of 2022. Your next touch point was the uh, October 17th of 2022. That uh, ran right into resistance up in the high of May 29th, 2023. That's what the U.S. dollar is trading into right now. That's a trend line that I would be most interested in. So if the U.S. dollar index is going to bust out, it needs to bust out above those levels out there. If you look at the monthly time frame chart, that's the lower left. What you'll see here is a bullish structured profile. If we get two months with closes above 103.62, that's the center of the bullish structured profile. Last month, price closed above it. If we got another close above it this month, as we come to the end of the month out here, which doesn't seem likely, but anything is possible, then we would have a signal that the U.S. dollar index over time wants to make a move to 113.68. And on a quarterly or the yearly time frame out here, um, you know, prices above profile there. So I think that over time, what the U.S. dollar index is communicating to us is price is going to move higher. What it's dealing with, though, is that trend line resistance. OK, that's the first thing. The second thing. And so now I don't have this set up. I didn't fully read your question, but we're going to go ahead and set it up. So here at the uh, top. 
let's actually put the uh, U.S. dollar. Uh, let's put Goldilocks. So um, GC Q23. So let's get that up there. Um, let's uh, below that right now is a Japanese yen. We're going to change that though here momentarily. Um, so let's go a DX. Let's go with U23 there too. And then I got to change that bottom panel. So give me a moment. I'm in here. D U23. Oh, you know, it doesn't like that. So let me get back up to the U.S. dollar. Let's change that to my uh, synthetic symbol. That'll be just fine. Whoops. DX. There we go. So that should take hold. Oh, you know, I should do it with gold, too. Yeah, I'm going to do it with gold as well. I'm going to put my, my synthetic symbol up there. We just recently rolled over here. So it's not picking up the uh, uh, it's not picking up the older data, and I would like to do that. So now I've just got one more change here to the bottom screen out there. Now what we're going to do here is we're comparing the U.S. dollar index uh, to, the, uh, to gold. We're going to take a look at this directional come on, work here. Let's deal with my screen. Okay. So now it should have taken, did it take? Yeah. It's now it's got to compute. Oh my goodness, goodness gracious. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Come on, that should have worked. Why isn't that working? Okay, well, now Stevie is uh, totally confused out here. So what I wanted to do, and I wanted to show you was the correlation or the lack of correlation it's not popping up on our screen right now sorry about that i'll try to find some way to do it i know what the results are i don't know what they oh here we go i know what the results are let me change this now because this has got the long time period out here well really what i want to show you so this is this is about the largest setting that i'll use which is a 20-day period what this is showing us this is showing us the average directional price movement between the u.s dollar and gold and, and the point that I want to make here, because this is the largest setting, this is really important, Greg, so I'm glad that it actually took a little time for me to get there. But when the bars are below zero, which most of them have been, they've been below that up until we got into June. When they're below them, it tells us about an inverse relationship, which is really what your email was referring to. You're concerned about taking a long position in gold because the U.S. dollar might move higher. Well, this tells us over this 20-day period of time, going back to the beginning of June, that correlation has come unglued. In fact, that's really what you want to see out here. You really want to see that correlation become unglued. Now, let's move down to a five-day period. I'll take just a moment here to calculate. And then the five-day period, it says, okay, we know longer term we're there. Shorter term, okay, let's take a look at a 10-day period. The point that I just want to make out here for you is that that correlation that people rely on so much, it's starting to break apart out there. So don't get completely hung up on that. And when gold is going to make its big run out here, what I'm sharing with you, what I'm saying is both the U.S. dollar and gold will, in fact, run higher at that same time. And that will take place. In fact, I thought maybe we had that starting this weekend with the uh, uh, with what, whatever the shenanigans were over in, over in uh, Russia. I just wish that our media... We're so cheerleaders for war. Man, I went to the oldest, the oldest, um, uh, some of the oldest churches over in, in Egypt, all saying really the same prayer, which was for peace and no third world war out there. In any event, so let's switch over and take a look at the U.S. dollar index. So what we know about the U.S. dollar index itself is there are several components in there. It's these currency pairs. So you've got the euro, the yen, the Great British Pound, the Canadian dollar, the loony up top. Those four represent like uh, a 90 some odd percent, 93, 96 percent. Somewhere right around there, 95%. So if we just take a look at those top four, we don't have to worry about the Swedish Corona. We don't have to worry about the Swiss franc. We can, but we don't have to worry about them. It's really what's going on with those. So if we take a look at the euro, here's what we know about the euro. The euro went ahead, formed a, a wave number seven bottom. It does that on the trading day of May 31st and takes price right up into TD9 count breakdown resistance. For the euro, that was at $1, 1.1006. 1 gets right up there, forms a TD9 count top. Now price is dealing with its oscillator and change line, which has held for the last uh, four trading sessions. Price is below that right now. If price closes below that, that being 1.089, odds favor the euro pulls back to 1.069. If, in fact, the euro does that, the U.S. dollar index is going to 
head higher, just simply because of the 57% weighting that the euro has. Now, if we take a look at the Japanese yen, the Japanese yen completed a TD9 count top on the trading day of June 26, just four short trading days ago. That pattern was negated right out of the bat the very next day. This says the yen wants to when the yen is moving higher, it tells us that it is weakening against the U.S. dollar index. So the yen wants to move higher. The euro wants to move lower. Both those will put energy into the U.S. dollar index. The Great British Pound has just formed an A to B equal CD to the downside. It's gotten to the 1 to 1 price projection level, but it doesn't have a bullish reversal candle. The Great British Pound says it wants to head lower. That's going to put energy into the U.S. dollar index as well. So you got that trend line that is dealing with. But if these currency pairs do what they are suggesting and want to do, the U.S. dollar index will take out that trend line. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Right. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Let's uh, end the show with a couple of requests from SNP inside the Tiger's Den. The uh, first one is to take a look at um, uh, CCJ, Kimiko. So let's take a look at it, get it up on our screen. Trading out right now at about $30.86. And um, this is back inside its profile. So we can say that it's uh, right now uh, trading within or consolidating within its profile. It's actually a new profile that is formed. It's not showing on this screen. It's showing on my next screen out here. So the bottom of that profile out there, the new one is 29.55. and The top is 30.77. We're trading just slightly above 30.77 right now. So your key area to watch here is 31.16. S&P 
if uh, uh, a CCJ, uh, Kimiko, Kimiko Corp, uh, closes above that, it should make its way up towards its recent highs. So discount the profile levels out there because you've got a new one that's in place out there. The weekly chart has a road momentum indicator top, but price pulled back and tested the top of its profile as well as its green oscillator and change line. Its signal is neutral. You're in wave number seven on the monthly time frame, but the only way that gets confirmed is a lower high. You won't get that confirmation until next month. So we take a look at CCJ, um, somewhat bullish out here, really, because of the weekly and the monthly. And so the daily says you get about 31.16, you head higher. The uh, next request would take a look at AMD. So let's get the, those charts here up on our screen. Wait for a moment for these to populate. And when we take a look at AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, this thing formed a TD nine count bottom two days ago. That pattern completes today. You have a new profile. At a minimum, what AMD should do out here, S&P, is get up to 114.59. That's the top of its new profile. If price can get above that, then you're off to the 117.90 area. That's the weekly, or that's the daily oscillator and change line. And above that, 125.85. So you've got a nice bottom on the daily time frame for AMD. The weekly pulled back and tested and rejected screen oscillator and change line. That's bullish. You're consolidating inside the monthly time frame. The key level of resistance there is 125.67. So S&P, I hope that helps you out. Hope I answered everybody's questions out there. Please stay tuned. We've got some great programming lined up. I'll be back with you for a show tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Please have a terrific Thursday, folks. See you soon.